Our next speaker is Professor Lauren Creeder. Uh, we now know, courtesy of Amanda, what you're expected to do as a public sector board member. Uh, now let's look at one in particular, HIE. Please welcome Professor Lauren Creeder. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you and uh, welcome everyone. It's, it's so good to see so many of you here, both uh, on and offline, so thank you uh, for coming along. Uh, clearly, as, as chair of a, a board and the board of high, it's really important to me personally that we have the most talented people on our, on our board, and that, that it comes from all ages, it comes from both genders, and a wide variety of representation from across our society. And that any uh, obstacles, real or perceived, that are, are removed to, to enable people to, to apply. So that's why uh, High and SNH, not Forest Commission, have really gone around uh, today to make sure <laughs> that uh, we fulfil uh, our obligations, uh, and in particular Scottish Government's desire that by 2020 we have a 50-50 uh, gender split on our boards, and so we should. So in High, as an organisation, 63% uh, uh, of all of my colleagues in High are female. Five of the seven leadership team are female, but the board is, in the majority, male. So we are about to embark upon a recruitment exercise. It should, I hope, be this week or, or worse next. It's, it's currently with the Cabinet Secretary for approval in terms of the specification we, ha we have designed. But uh, you should be able to see it uh, online very, very shortly. And this gives me an opportunity to thank Tanya and Jenny and the rest in uh, Change of the Chemistry for facilitating this event and the ones we've, I've been at before, which have been very helpful in, in me trying to pass on our message. Now, Sheila Campbell Lloyd was going to be talking to you after me. She's a shadow board member. What's a shadow board member? Well, well what we've tried to do in High, and we were the first public sector organisation to do it, was in terms of breaking down barriers in terms of expectation. We've had two shadow board members, both female, uh, who sit on our board, experience uh, what is done in high, giving them an understanding of what's required of a board member, and really making it an understandable process and being able to talk about that message to others. Now, this is a special year for high as well. It's our 50th anniversary. Uh, and we are the successor body to HIDB. And I'm very proud uh, of really everything that the organisation does. But a, a source of particular pride for me is that Highlands Islands Enterprise is absolutely unique in the sense that it was the first ever world body set about with an economic development challenge. And 50 years ago, we had what was called the Highland problem. Significant depopulation of the Highlands and Islands, lack of opportunity for our young people in very traditional industries. And HIDB was set up to intervene and to see if we could change uh, the dynamics of the Highlands and Islands economy. And from a short DVD I'm going to show you in a minute or two, that's going to tell you a bit about what the challenges were, what we've done, and what the challenges are going forward. So let me see if I can go on to the second. Our purpose is there already. That's our, our general purpose. And the, the darker green area is the Highlands and Islands Enterprise area. I'm very surprised how big it is, but it's more than half of Scotland, so we go down to Macrahanish and we go uh, up into the, the Clyde Valley to Rossi and Danoon, Isle of Butte, and we go all the way up to uh, the Shetland Islands. So it's a, it's a massive area with enormous diversity in terms of community and economy, and the tasks that HI has in making sure that we have a sustainable economic growth <coughs> platform for the whole of the area. So in High, on the Board of High, we have, we have four main priorities. And these priorities are, first of all, supporting businesses and social enterprises. A unique remit we have is strengthening our communities and fragile areas, many of them on the Western seaboard, developing growth sectors, and these are amazing opportunities for us in High. Uh, we look around our coastline, our wind, wave and tide, and the unique opportunities they present for our communities. And finally, we have we've an obligation to build a co very competitive and low carbon region. And you'll see in the DVD about superfast broad, uh, broadband rollout. Also, I'm very proud of the fact that in High, we've also been given a Scotland-wide remit uh, and that's in relation to Community Broadband Scotland, the Scottish Land Fund, and most recently Wave Energy Scotland, responsible for seeking to develop the technology that we're going to need to use the, and harness uh, the wealth of our wave power. 
uh, that we have around our shores. So for me, uh, I've been on the Board of High for five years as a board member and I'm now into my fourth year as chair. I've done lots of public sector uh, positions, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, it's a great privilege, but none more so than being on the Board of High. I think it's an incredibly purposeful organisation that does a great deal of good and it was an enormous, again, privilege for me on Friday at the SCDI dinner that uh, High was given the President's Award. That's for contribution uh, to the economy of the Highlands and Islands. And it's not the norm for public sector organisations to get awards at private sector membership dinners. So it was a really special moment for us, particularly in our golden anniversary, which this, this year is. And the short DVD you're just about to see celebrates our golden anniversary, tells you about what we've done, the challenges we faced, but much more importantly for you, I hope, as putative board members going forward, what are the challenges for us and what are the opportunities? And after it, I'll come back and say a few more words. So we're going to see the, the, the video now. The Highlands and Islands of Scotland has a timeless beauty, but life hasn't always been easy. By the 1960s, a combination of factors had pushed the region into severe economic decline. In 1965, prompted by Scottish Secretary Willie Ross, the government took radical action to address what it called the Highland Problem. It set up an innovative organisation, the Highlands and Islands Development Board. In its first year, it invested £840,000 in 176 business projects across the region. These created over 1,000 jobs. In 1991, the torch was passed to a new organisation, Highlands and Islands Enterprise. And today, the contrast in the region's fortunes could hardly be greater.
many of HIE's current projects will continue to grow and deliver benefits for future generations. And HIE is listening to young people. Their world is a far cry from the days of the Highland problem. They see opportunities to live, learn, study and invest in building a positive future in the Highlands and Islands. Well, wonderful music, the most beautiful part of the planet. And um, one of the things that I've done since I became chair was that we now have our board meetings across a very wide area. Our next board meeting will be in Orkney. And it's very important to me that we're connected to our communities and connected to our businesses. So a real pleasure for me, and I know for fellow board members, is traveling around the Highlands and Islands and meeting people and engaging with them, seeing how well uh, that High is doing for them in, in managing our account managed businesses and how we're helping them fulfill their objective of growing their businesses and hopefully internationalising. As our 50th year, we had a, a staff get together. Everyone from High uh, came together uh, in Inverness and it was an amazing event. Uh, we meet people from High, many have been with us a very long time and the word often used is privilege. It's a great privilege to help people fulfill their dreams and ambitions. And at that uh, conference, I gave a, a short address, but took uh, colleagues around the patch as I knew it in my travels, some of the things that I'd seen and some of the businesses I'd met. And I thought that it might be useful just to give you the couple of paragraphs I, I said to them, uh, giving you an insight into the sort of things that we do, and that might resonate with you uh, around your understanding of the Highlands and Islands and some of the businesses that you might be interested in. So for me, uh, I began in the East and it would be engineering at Forsyth's, electronics and ATOS at Forest, cashmere at Johnson's, shortbread at Aberlour, the UK's largest organic carrot producer in Elgin, RAF personnel in New Industries, Craig Elachie Hotel and Social Enterprise, Knock and Do Mill. Innovation in Life Sciences in Elgin, our partnership with Glasgow School of Art. Back here to Inverness and Beechwood Campus, UHI, New Start Highland, North to Nigan Global Energy, Cromarty Port Authority, Dornoch and Golf, the extension to Lynx Hotel and community involvement. Up to Wick and its harbour we help create, the Chamber of Commerce we help start and support, Scrabster Harbour we supported, nuclear decommissioning at Dunray and North Highland College, natural retreats at John O'Groats, Maygen and the Pentland Firth, over the sea to Orkney and the uh, European Marine Energy Centre, a first and most prominent in the world, our help for ORTAC, up to Shetland and the oil and gas hub, Ocean Kinetics, Cope Social Enterprise, Pure Energy and Flooda Boats, Lerwick Port Authority, Back to the North and West, Chocolate in Durness, Harbour in Ullapool, and Industrial Development. Over to Stornoway and Stag's Bakery, Arnish, Harris Tweed, Stornoway Pontoons, and support for the recent Carloway Community Land buyout. Harris and the New Distillery, St Kilda Boats and St Kilda Centre, the US and Becula and Barra, and Machmadi Harbour, home to me in Westeros and Sail West, Pontoons, Pontoons in Malik, Kyle of Lacalche and Shieldig, Rassi House, Somorostig, Kinloch Lodge Hotel, Argyle and Wind Towers at Macrahanish, infrastructure projects in Danun, the Pavilion in Rothsey and Loch Fine Oysters, and heading home to Gearloch, north to BSW Timber in Fort William, Ferguson Transport and Kishorn, making the most of the Caledonian Canal. The views from our mountain, Cairngorm, and its funicular, our support for the ski industry, and everywhere improving digital connectivity, Community Broadband Scotland, and Scottish Land Fund, and so the list goes on. Why would you not want to be part of Highlands and Islands Enterprise doing so much good in the Highlands and Islands? And I really do hope that you have a look at the application and you do, uh, if, it, if it appeals to you, uh, seek to join the Board of High, which is so personally important to me 
and I believe so important for the sustainability of economic generation in the Highlands and Islands. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kerry, for that very impassioned speech. And uh, can, can you just put your hand up if you don't now want to join the Board of High? <laughs> Just as I thought, yeah, we'll be fighting each other for those board positions. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And I do, it does make me wonder what would have happened if nothing had happened. We hadn't had the Highlands and Islands Development Board 50 years ago, and we hadn't had the work uh, that Lauren and his board, and of course, all the hundreds of members of staff have been doing so valiantly in the background ever since.